would like to outline the WOMI method that I'm using to create tubes to create my own bicycle. WOMI stands for wrapped outer mandrel inner, which basically sums up how the tube is constructed. On the inside, there is an aluminum mandrel, which happens to be a tube, and its external diameter is the desired internal diameter of the tube. This mandrel is then polished and coated in wax, a mold release wax, which is basically a high build car wax, pretty much equivalent. This wax pr creates the sheer surface. The wax fails when the tube is being extracted, and therefore the tube is much easier to extract. This uh, mandrel is then held in a sort of lathe looking contraption and the filaments are wrapped around it in both spirals and in axial formats. Um, currently, I'm using a two axial, two spiral layer setup, four layers in total, one spiraled one way, one spiraled the other way, and the two axials to take up bending moments. Uh, the mandrel and fiber is then wrapped in a peel ply, which uh, was going to be a bad diagram. Also very crowded diagram, probably don't know what's going on right now, but uh, you basically have those layers, mandrel, fiber, peel ply. So mandrel inner, wrapped outer. The, as you can see the peel ply is in tape form, hence the wrapped. Here we have a tube that was made using the Wormy technique. Uh, characteristics are an incredibly smooth inside from the uh, mandrel and it's perfectly polished physical, exterior physical characteristic and then quite a rough outside which can be sanded down and polished and then re-epoxied to uh, sheen due to the peel ply which creates small little spikes everywhere when you tear it off. The peel ply I believe is Dacron and from what I understand the resin hates Dacron and therefore does not bond to it, but does seep past it, because it is, as you can see, it does let light through. So it does have holes in it, which the resin can seep through. The peel ply, however, is not primarily used to increase fiber fraction, more to compact the fibers into their location. The fact that no vacuum of any sort is being used is a result of the fact that the tube is filament wound using pre-impregnated fi uh, filaments or rovings or tau depending on how you want to say it and so the fiber fraction is already quite high when you're wrapping the tube so very little excess resin is ever pulled off with the peel ply if anything I found tremendous amounts of excess resin cause the peel ply to fail and therefore get stuck to the tube which is unsatisfactory at the end of the mandrel is this thing called a hedgehog, which is a term I phrased for it due to its rather prickly appearance, which is a small solid piece of aluminum, in this case hexagonal prisms, with spikes that leave everywhere. And the spikes are um, radially placed to make them almost even all the way around. On the inch tube, for the top tube and the seat post, there are 48 spikes per end, which means a total of, what is that, 48 times 2, 96 axial passings per layer, which makes the tubes pretty damn strong. But anyway, these hedgehogs facilitate the passing of the filaments to create each layer, and therefore a perfectly made tube, while sitting on the mandrel, will be one fiber. Of course when the uh, fibers are cut to remove the tube from the mandrel, different story. It becomes, what, 96 independent strands per tube. And that's basically the WOMI method for constructing, hopefully, bicycle tubes, or in general, tubes, just tubes. Um, I will probably talk about in the next video the filament wetter that applies the resin to the filaments before they go into the mandrel. It should explain to those who are skeptical 
how the fiber fraction can get so high. I have no way of calculating the fiber fraction, but I think it's pretty good. It's not dripping. It's a Shazam.